In this video, we'll introduce pointers. Our motivation for introducing pointers has to do with parameter passing. In Python and Java, parameters were passed two ways. For numbers, a copy of the number is passed to the function. Let's look at an example. So here's a swap in function um, that's just going to take in and swap the values of the two integers that were passed to it. And below it, we see that we're actually giving x and y values and then calling swap ints. Well, when we give them values, what's really going on? So in memory, we see that x is a value of 2 and y has a value of 5. When the call is made to swap ints, what happens is that copies of those integers are passed up there. Now you'll notice that inside swap ints, we can change those values all we want. But the original values down below, say in main, remain unchanged. On the other hand, for immutable objects like lists, just a reference to the object is passed into the function. So let's look at a second example, very similar. Um, here we have a swap list elements function that takes a list and a couple of indices into that list. And it's going to swap the elements in those two positions. Down below, we declare a list and then call swap list elements. When we declare the list, we see it looks a little bit different. A list, which is an object, is just a reference to the actual location in memory where all the data is stored. So when we call the function, what's being copied is just the reference. Now you'll notice that I have two references, but the data is only stored in one place. In this example, when I switch the data inside the swap list elements function, it's swapped down below in main as well, since there's only one list. In C, you can get a reference to any variable. And these references are called pointers. Now, there are a couple new terms that you'll need to be familiar with. The first is an address. An address is simply the location in memory of a variable. Second, a pointer is a variable that stores the address of some other variable. In C, we can get the address of any variable. If we pass a variable's address, then, as a parameter to a function, the function can then change the value of that variable. Let's take a look at the syntax. So here we have an integer num that's been initialized with a value 4. Now, we're declaring pnum to be of type pointer to integer. And you'll note that I'm using the asterisk or the star to declare the pointer. So I read this backwards. pnum is of type pointer to int. And that means that pnum has the ability to hold the address of an integer. Well, what I need to do now is actually give it the address of the integer that I, that I want it to point to. And that's what I'm going to do in this next line of code. I say pnum gets the address of num. And you'll notice that I'm using the ampersand to get the address of another variable. So you might remember that if you squint a little bit at the ampersand, it kind of looks like an A, which maybe that'll help you to remember that that means address. Let's look at another example. Here I'm declaring change to be a double with a value of 45 hundredths. Now if I want a pointer to that double, how do we do it? Here's the syntax. P change is declared as type pointer to double. Now you'll notice that I'm declaring that pointer and then giving it a value in the same line. So I'm saying that that gets the address of change. We can see the, the green line here shows that P change refers to the value change. What else can I do? You'll notice in this next line that I'm using the asterisk within an expression. That has a different meaning, and that's called dereferencing the pointer. I'm assigning a value to the variable to which p change points. And in our example, we see that change no longer has the value of, of 45 hundredths, but now 6 tenths. Well, that's it. Until next time, I'm Matt.